So how's everyone doing? That's Lewis, founder and main signal provider in Pips Nation. I hope everyone's doing great. Today's video is gonna be more of a on-screen video where I'm gonna be teaching you guys a very beginner-friendly support and resistance strategy. I will catch you guys right now on the charts. So we are back here on the charts, guys. We are gonna be using my MacBook for this. We're gonna be looking at my MacBook because since it's a beginner-friendly strategy, Right, I want to use a MacBook um, due to the fact that a lot of you guys are just using your laptop or your computer for this, and you don't, you know, a lot of you don't have a full trading setup, right? So I want to use it on my MacBook so you guys could really understand how easy it is to catch this strategy just using your, you know, laptop for this. Now, what we're going to be talking about is support and resistance right we're going to be talking about pullbacks and support and resistance and we're going to be speaking about the probability of you actually catching a trade using a pullback strategy right and for my pullback strategy i'm going to teach you guys how to use a certain percentage to enter the market right so the first thing we're going to do is go here and grab a horizontal line with the horizontal line we're going to draw out our first resistance point we're going to draw out our second resistance point which will be right here which will be right here so from this point on we're going to draw our support our support will be typically right here right now we're not going to be using this whole chart right it's kind of for me it's kind of pointless to use the whole chart unless you're looking at a higher time frame right the time frame we're going to be looking at today to understand this strategy is the 15 minute time frame right so using the 15 minute time frame we're only going to use this space right here right which i'm going making circles around right to understand this strategy right now when you are trading support and resistance right the main thing you want to look out for is when a market reaches the area of support and resistance if the market's in the middle of support and resistance you can't really do much right you, you you don't know if it's gonna go up or if it's gonna go down from the middle right because typically it would reach the middle right in this scenario not really but typically it reaches the middle and then either people make impulsive decisions of entering the market and the market reverses on them or right the market goes with them right now if it goes with them they win congratulations but most likely than not what you should be doing is waiting for the market to reach an area of support or resistance. Now, this is where you're gonna learn how to trade pullbacks. Pullbacks is very simplistic. It's when the market has a pullback when it reverses its direction towards another direction, right? Now, when you're trading support and resistance, you're gonna see a lot of consolidation. Now, when you see consolidation, right? Depending on the volatility of the consolidation, you would want to trade that market. Now, we're going to be looking at US 30 like we are right now. With US 30, we could expect high volatility. So the first thing you want to look at when you are looking at support and resistance is how big is the gap between the support and resistance, which in this scenario, when we draw it out, it's about 130 points, right? Those 130 points are an opportunity for you to make money, depending on your risk to reward and your risk management, right? So 130 points for me is absolutely phenomenal. So what we're gonna do is look at different areas of pullbacks, right? This is the first area right here where the market has a breakout, right? It breaks down to then have a pullback to break up, to then have a pullback to break down, to then have another pullback and break up, to then not fully reach the resistance, but have a pullback to break down, to break up a little fake out, break down again, to break up, have a pullback, break down, have a pullback, pullback, pullback. Now you see how many pullbacks occurred there? It's about 10 pullbacks, right? Now, why am I teaching you guys how to trade pullbacks rather than breakouts, right? A pullback is more likely to happen than a breakout. I wanna teach you guys how to consistently catch a strategy or consistently catch a move rather than waiting all day for the move, right? I want you, I want to teach you guys how when you are in a chart, right, you could wait anywhere from one hour to two hours to catch a move rather than wait the whole day for it, right? So with a breakout, you typically have to wait for the market to break out. That may take anywhere from one hour 
all the way to one week, depending on what time zone you're looking at and what market you're looking at. With a pullback, however, you could wait anywhere from one hour to four hours. You could really shorten the time frame, right? So when a pullback occurs, what I like to do to go in the signal, right? To go in the market, I said signal because I send out signals. Now, what I like to do to go in the market is use a 20% rule. Now, what I'm drawing out is a signal that I send out today, right? So um, if you guys are wondering what is a signal, a signal is where I tell people where to buy or sell the market, right? Now, where do I send signals? I send signals on Pips Nation on Telegram. If you guys go down in the description below, I have a free signals group where you guys could click and take my signals for free, right? So this morning at nine, exactly, I send out a buy on US 30, right? The reason I send out a buy on US 30 is because I saw the market reach more than 20% of its momentum towards the upside, right? So here's 40, right? This is 40 points right here, right where I send the market, 35 points, 40 points, right? If we look at the whole gap, the whole gap is about 125, 130 points, right? So what I waited for on catching this pullback was not enter it right here, where we really don't know if it's gonna break out or reverse. What I did was wait for the market to break towards the upside. And then once it's 20% upwards, I entered the market, right? So what you're gonna be doing, right? From now on, when you're trading support and resistance is you're gonna be a waiter. You're gonna wait for the market to move 20% to its other destination, right? And when it's 20% on the way, you're gonna enter the market, right? Now, the reason you're gonna wait is to have a better and more solid confirmation of what the market's gonna do, right? Because most likely, than, more, more likely than ever, right? When you're entering a market, right? And you're trading support and resistance, if you wait 20%, majority of the time, the market continues to move right majority of the time look at this right here if you would have waited it continues to move right here if you would have waited it continues to move right here if you would have waited it continues to move right here right it still continued to move it wasn't the biggest move right but look at the scenario right here if you would have waited let's say you would have entered right if you entered right here and it goes down right then you're only going to be losing you know very small you're, you're going to be losing very small amounts right? Because where you're going to put your take profit and your stop loss is right above or below the support and resistance. So here's a good example. Let's say this moves up to 20%, right? You're going to put your stop loss typically right here. And you're going to put your take profit up here, right? And that is a, <clears throat> this is a 2.5 risk to reward, right? So that means you're going to gain a hundred points while only risking 40 points. Now, everyone's strategies may be different. Your risk to reward may be different. Your risk management may be different, right? So depending on how those are, you would use this strategy and change it up a little bit. But with that being said, I hope you guys understood what I said. Definitely rewatch the videos as many times as you need to understand each and every single component of this. Appreciate you all.